Hare Krishna World Racers, Abhina and Roger here. Let's read your comments of the Bhagavad Gita chapters 7, 8 and 9. This Gita version of Stephen Mitchell. And I have to say this is my favorite translation so far. I know it's not Roger's favorite. It is still as it is. But um, for me, it was it went right into the heart. And actually, um, <laughs> yeah, it went so deep. It went just really deep. <laughs> so thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Let's start. She can remember this chapter is eternal bliss. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt that bliss. You felt that bliss. Um, yeah, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And thanks for using those channel emojis. <laughs> yeah. Hare yeah. Krishna. We just want to say goodbye to Animated World NLS. Um, yeah, is this the only... No, I think we got uh, other comments to be, people being upset mm. that um, we read a version from a Western mm. um, man. And I have to say that I'm... I am incredibly disappointed that there is so much judgment about the Westerners mm. and the Indians. It's like it's such a split and it's it's becoming so apparent on this channel. It really surprises me because mm -hmm. people seem to forget totally about karma. Like who's to say that uh, Stephen Mitchell wasn't a, you know, direct disciple of Ramana Maharshi in his previous life as mm. an Indian? And who's to say that you, you know, were not... A westerner in your previous life mm -hmm. it's like it's so confusing people are so seem to be so yeah, attached to this life and I, i'm born indian and now indian like i'm so proud of my india and yeah you can be proud but also understand that you're only incarnated in this life there like you don't know where the heck you came from before. yeah so identified with you know a geography right instead of it was so contradictory to the comments that I love that say we're all one family, right? We're all beings manifesting, you know, on this world together at this time. We don't know what our past lifetime was. And even if we did, then we would become attached to who I was in my <laughs> past lifetime. Like we're not physical beings. That's no. the point. We're spiritual beings. And we need to mm. accept that we're all on the journey together. And Stephen Mitchell, for all we know, he might have been a fully realized yogi in his previous lifetime. We should be happy. You know, if somebody's making a, a Bhagavad Gita translation, it's not for the money, right? Mm, it's nice to help spread one. the teachings. Chignish. Wisdom is knowing Sri Krishna as an eternal being dwells in the hearts of all. May Sri Krishna bless all with love and kindness. Jai Sri Krishna. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, we are so very happy to hear that. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> we know I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah, very good reaction. Mm. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavata Vasudeva. Thank you very much. Well, there's more to come. <laughs> Stick around. Sony, mm. our member. My brother, your <laughs> videos are truly well-being of our souls. Aww. Thanks for diving this deep. Your one single video changed me totally. It's like I have found a milestone in this path of learning and experiencing. I will share my experiences with you now. I looked too far away in search of God. I acted like I am happy and good, but I wasn't. My life was a hell. Mm -hmm. But once I realized Krishna is everywhere, in it, in you, in them, even inside me, my understanding of everything I knew was changed and blessed drastically. I don't have to afraid of my ego, anger, my little perception of accomplishment anymore. If there is one fear, then it will be the insecurity of being reborn without a privilege to touch this experience of <laughs> Krishna. Wow. I fear death, but not anymore. Uh -huh. This phenomena is his Leela. We are all part of him acting on our own and our materialistic experiences in this huge material realm. If I'd reborn and with a privilege to learn more about him again and again, I will not ask for freedom. I can keep playing and acting in his Leela no matter how much pain, sorrows, happiness throws at me. Yes. Ah, oh, beautiful. I didn't read it. Fantastic. Oh, this is so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay. So happy for you, Sony. 
amazing. Um, I could feel you. I could feel your realization, yeah, and your heart and your uh, peace, like that yeah. comes with with hmm. with these insights. Beautiful. Yeah, so great. It's the power of Krishna's <sighs> message, right? Yeah. Oh. And then so grateful, so amazing. Um, mm. See, so just just simply for that, you know, yeah. the whole Gita like study is already worth that. It's just so beautiful. Yeah, just having one insight, one person, you know, so that and then this seems like a very deep insight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for you. sharing. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, so great. Hmm. Dharma, a beautiful name, but the comment is a bit hmm, hmm. we're not sure about. Please, please go to nearest ISKCON temple and get acquaintance with devotees. I'm afraid that you will be misled by other gurus. You need a guru in the lineage of Chaitanya hmm. Mahaprabhu, golden avatar of Lord Krishna. Hurry, please. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Well, thank you so, so much for your concern yeah. but i do feel quite safe and quite confident in the supreme lord krishna that i am well positioned in his lap in the tender heart of the devotion that i feel towards krishna and the wisdom that he has granted me access to i think that i'm going to be okay i think that sabina is going to be okay and no offense to iskon or any gurus from any tradition and any lineage mm. but there's no guarantee that any of them really are are further along the path mm. you know than you are if you're a true seeker in your heart and you've you know have this longing for god in your heart and in your soul you know then you need to have that faith and that confidence and that trust in god yeah. you know to deliver you right? I, I find these kind of comments a little sad to be honest this is you know, really implying that this is the only way, literally, which is uh, exactly what the the fundamental Christians are doing. Um, this and is Islam, the only right? and and Islam, um, and I think I might be wrong, but I think that only Iskon people, um, right, go to is like I, I don't think there are many other people mm -hmm. from other traditions saying you should go there do this or do that mm -hmm. it's always just is god it's like yeah. do this do that and you know we've been to a Hare krishna place mm -hmm. and the person there like they they, they are pushy they, they they are pushy and honestly i i I wouldn't surrender to that. It's like mm. they make friends with you and then they take you to the library and want you to buy books, remember? Oh, yeah. And it's like, it's just so disappointing because mm. it's like they're not living the truth because if they would be living the truth, they you would feel drawn to them and they would not need to try sell your books. Mm. You would listen to them. You would hang on their lips. You know, it's like, oh, please keep... Because, you know, I can really... I can really feel the truth shining through you. And then hmm. that would automatically make me go to the library because I want to know more about what he realized, right? Hmm. But you don't know what people need. Yeah. Quite yeah. frankly, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So saying that we need a guru in that lineage, hmm. you know, you're saying that, you know, we're lost and Krishna yeah. doesn't have the power even though we're studying the Gita right now, we have a spiritual channel. We've, uh, we've been on the journey a long time. But until we go surrender to somebody at an ISKCON temple, we're doomed. Yeah. Hmm. Sounds like some fundamentalist religions that I've yeah. heard of. But yeah, we got to let go of that, right? Because yeah. you're, 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 you're still, you're limiting Krishna in this way. You know, and you're you're disagreeing with what he says in the Bhagavad Gita that all pure devotees, by whatever faith and whatever path and whatever book and whatever tradition and however way, if they're sincere in their devotion and they're seeking for me, you know, they will attain me. Krishna says that in the Gita. So why would I need to go to somebody else when because you're saying that Krishna doesn't have the power to save me? D. This is I like about the Gita. It says, whatever God you worship, ultimately you will reach me through them. How sweet is that story where Vishnu prays to Shiva and Shiva prays <laughs> to Vishnu. That is why we have so many gods in Sanatan Hindu Dharma. 
Absolutely, and I agree, and I absolutely love it. And the thing is, I think this world would be a totally different place if, yeah, if we understood the teachings of the enlightened masters, because they were all teaching this. But over time, of course, the teachings got misunderstood, you know, you know, misinterpreted, mistranslated, and because we're ego beings, and we don't understand such high concepts and high truth. But the fundamental wisdom that is the ground and the base of yeah, Sanatan Dharma, you know, is sound and it's true. And it's like, you know, God is infinite, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Of course, there can be different ways and forms and manifestations and ways to realize and understand, you know, even beyond the Bhagavad Gita. Gita Parma. That part when Krishna speaks about moon and sun, it means moon gets lightness from sun, but sun burns itself to give light. So when he speaks about moon, it those who want to go to heaven or other lokas would return to earth after their good karma is over. But those who wish moksha will go to Krishna and never be reborn again. Hmm. So meaning that the sun is everlasting, so if you die on the sun phase, then it's more apt to go to heaven. But if you die oh. on the moon phase, because you're, you're going to go towards the light, maybe. Huh. So then, but if the light is in the moon, it's, if it's in, in darkness, and it's the, so it's really just the sun reflecting on the moon, and then you're going to go to the moon, maybe like another realm. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Rajis. Hmm. When Sabina said it is easy to achieve, question mark, I understand Sabina meant the outcome. Bhagavad Gita itself says don't look for fruits. Looking for fruits at the start of the journey is actually undoing the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. We need to take selfless action of treading on the long journey by being unmindful of the destination. Let's not even think of the destination or the fruits. Yeah. Yes and no. Yeah, I agree and disagree because we need to, we do need to know that there is, you know, you know, a destination. If it's like, you know, if I think that, you know, there, if I don't believe in heaven, if I think there is no purpose in life and there's nothing to achieve, you know, after death and that Krishna might not possibly, you know, take me up because then it kind of, undoes everything so yeah you're surrendering the fruits but at the same time you you have to hold something in mind right like if i hold krishna in mind then i can i can yeah. trust that i'm gonna go there but i'm not gonna it's not my doing right so i'm mm -hmm. surrendering i'm surrendering that the fruit is going to be my doing right because mm -hmm. the fruit is krishna's doing but there still is fruit right if you if you think that okay we can't think of the fruit at all meaning that you got to make it, we got to pretend like there is no fruit, then then we're not going to get anywhere, right? Yeah, I think um, it is important to understand where it leads, um, and then you develop faith, right? Mm -hmm. So then once you have faith, you can let go of the goal, because you are already so devoted to the truth, like in a way, like, mm -hmm. right, like you read something or you... Mm -hmm. You come to the realization, yet, yeah, wow, Krishna is real. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have this deep, deep faith. And with that faith comes, it automatically comes that it doesn't matter what happens anymore. Like there is no destination anymore. And then you can fully surrender and you can mm -hmm. surrender every fruit. So you basically just have the intention to merge with Krishna. And then that's it. That's all you focus on. Mm -hmm. um, and not the actual result yeah. then in the end you know if it wasn't important to understand this the fruit so let's talk about the fruit of you know the highest fruit which is you know krishna going to krishna's realm or becoming a krishna devotee in full bhakti where krishna you know takes you and he saves you and he liberates you but isn't the yeah. highest highest like not going to krishna but just being gone that depends. There is no so so even that definition oh, okay, of okay. highest okay, is yeah. beyond yeah, yeah, yeah. conception, right? We don't know what's highest. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what if our and if our soul is destined to merge into, you know, you know, Krishna yeah. impersonal mm -hmm. form, that might be the highest for us. But for somebody else, it might be his physical form in his realm would be the most desirable thing, right? And the thing is, so these are the 
these are the fruits that are possible. And so if it wasn't beneficial to know that, then Krishna wouldn't have taught it. He wouldn't have taught it in the Bhagavad Gita. So here he's saying that these are the ultimate fruits. Now that you know what they are, you surrender them onto mm. me. So it's okay to know about the fruit, but you still want to surrender them, you know. Mm. You know, So you're surrendering your actions. So you're responsible for the intention, you know, and the effort, but not yeah. the result. Yeah, maybe he means that and it's just not expressed um, like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ankush Zap. In Kali Yuga, due to unjust sins, immorality, people are bound to take rebirths. No one 100% sin-free. Krishna himself will come as Kalki and will absolve all our souls, thereby beginning the Sat Yuga again. Yeah, there's no doubt that we have some negative karma and that's why we are manifesting, you know, in this world or in other worlds. Because if we had no negative karma and if we were free of sin and we were pure beings, then we would be beyond this material realm already. We'd what be that, liberated. What does that mean? He will, uh, he will uh, um, absorb our souls. Absolve. Well, absolution, right? He will, I don't know, for the really... I don't know what he means here, but for the really sinful and the evil beings, I'm pretty sure, you know, Kalki will probably send them to some hell realms, I imagine. Mm, okay, oh, it just sounded like he will, I don't know, it reminded me of the Moon Knight. Remember when, when, the, when the crocodile ate all the souls? Oh. And it's like he will eat all the souls, so, and then, you know, a new yuga begins, and then... Hmm. There will be souls again. When you think about it, so it's probably, so that could be what it is. It's like the destruction, right? So yeah. then all beings will die, but the, nobody really dies because we're spiritual beings, right? So all the souls will get reabsorbed into Krishna. Yeah. And then during the next, you know, cycle, they'll be, you know, reborn again, right? Fascinating. And I wonder if that is then the end of the mind stream and if the mind, you know... Because it doesn't really, like... I don't think so, because the mind stream is beginningless, right? And Krishna does say that we have never not existed, right? So we are be beginningless, oh, okay. but we're we're like particles oh, okay. of Krishna in a way. Yeah. But we're still part of him, and then so the creation <laughs> begins, and then we all emanate from him mm -hmm. again. But if we... And that's the material nature, right? So if we want to ascend spiritually, then yeah, we need to practice the yogas, and then eventually, you know, bhakti, and then we can attain enlightenment where we so i can see it as still merging with krishna when we're talking about you know non-form non-duality but so we transcend the ego and then we merge with god yeah. but then we're conscious of it whereas mm. whereas if we're destroyed then you go into like a you, you're just gone right dream state but you're not aware it's the same thing at the time of death that if you die consciously then you can attain the higher realms there's a world raiser, facts never lie. Facts never lies with his heart chakra. <laughs> yeah. Unlock. Thanks for embracing that heart chakra. Um, it's nice to see your comments, my man. Hare Krishna. When I pray, feels so peaceful. Mm. Amazing. Hmm. I can feel you, bro. Yeah. Such sweet comments from Zuzi. And then Arvin, he said Sabina was in Mount Vrat. What is that? Have you heard that? No. No. Please elaborate. Okay, elaborate. Because, hmm. um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind knowing more about what I'm experiencing lately. I think mm. in this video it was uh, when I stopped speaking, yeah. Mm. And David Hawkins uh, said, yeah. Um, some teachings they stun you into silence that's all i know about that state yet um if there is more clarification on that i would appreciate it um mm -hmm. yeah because let us know i don't know what's happening we can look it up too but it's funner when the comments. when we get more comments <laughs> yeah. oh there's a loose stupid demon again <laughs> If you ever visit Vrindavan, I guarantee you that the atmosphere there will make you cry. 
Everywhere from everyone you will hear Rade Rade. Oh, you will see elders, young and children all chanting Hare Krishna wow. on streets. Everywhere you will see people crying, dancing wow. and craving for Krishna. Some people will be seen distributing food to the poor oh. and some will be seen bowing down to the land of Vrindavan. Oh. Such a blissful atmosphere where you'll find the essence of pure love of devotees towards the oh. Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, can't wait. Beautiful. Mm. And then B says, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <laughs> Hope I said that right. And healing with music lives in Rundavan. Yeah. Aww. Nice. Well, fortunate. Wow, wow, wow. It's definitely on the list. We'll be there one day. We're in India. <gasps> B once again. B. <laughs> Shri Krishna Bhagavan, while explaining these verses, is coming from the highest perspective possible, and that is the ultimate reality. And hence, these words containing I, me, etc., refers to the Supreme Soul, mm. ultimate reality, that manifests itself in various ways and characteristics for its devotees. In the Sri Krishna Avatara, Bhagavan provides different ways for a bhakta or devotee to follow to attain oneness with the Supreme Reality. Yeah, for children with a tender heart and innocent mind, visualize the ultimate reality or, or the universe as their childhood friend and close confidant. In a boy form of their age, which serves their attachment with the mortal reality leading to moksha or nirvana. Similarly, for a wise, old, and knowledgeable individual, would find more relevance worshipping the Supreme Lord in his form while teaching the Bhagavad Gita in this form is the reason Sri Krishna is called Universal Teacher. Yes, yes, wow. yes. Yeah, many ways, Beautiful. many paths. And yeah, I heard that too, you know, during my journey. It's like, how do you relate to God? And it's like, God can be related, you know, in any way that's mm. applicable, right? So yeah, as a friend, as a teacher, as, you know, a Lord or a Savior or even, a, mm. you know, mm. a guru or as, you know, father, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, so many ways. And then it's all, it's all allowed, right? Everything is allowed and permissible when you're seeking the divine. And I love that too, like for children, because it would be hard for children, you know, to grasp these teachings at such a young age, which is why I love the, you know, the little Krishna episodes, right? And then, yeah. and then so, oh, yeah, yeah. so some of our, you know, our community members now, we have, you know, a few that have been with us since the little Krishna <laughs> episodes. And it's just wonderful because you see that love and devotion for Krishna, mm. even though some of them haven't studied the Gita yet, but they just know that this is God and they made that, that attachment. And if there's something that you want to be attached to and desire, <laughs> let it be God, let it be Krishna, right? <laughs> that's okay. And that's, you know, wonderful. So, mm. so as a childhood friend, right? Avan. Hey, channel admin. Are you aware of topics of Hatha Yoga, Prana, Pranayam, Nadis, etc.? I asked it in the earlier video too. I wish you'd discuss it someday. The physical part like asanas, yama, niyama. Um, yeah, we are aware of those topics, but we haven't really dived into it too much yet this far on our journey. But of course, <laughs> we are on the path and we will definitely cover it in the future. So yeah, it's not part of our practice, um, hmm. if that's what you mean. Musham. Jagad Guru Sri Kripalu Ji Maharaj said there are three ways of doing bhakti. Mm -hmm. Bhakti should be ananya, means one should love or do bhakti only and only towards Sri Krishna. Because you do bhakti towards any deities or gods or anything, it automatically goes to Sri Krishna. But the result <laughs> you get only for that particular god or deities. But our goal of ultimate happiness will remain unfulfilled. So we should love only Sri Krishna or other, go other gods or deities will automatically feel happy with that because he is the source of all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you pour... Yeah, they, uh, Okay, I think I know what you're getting at, and that, yes, I agree. Like, Sri Krishna, for me also, is the ultimate. But I don't want to say that he is the only way, because that limits him, right? Because he is the only way by not being the only way. Right? There are many ways and many paths. And yes, they are all Krishna, but if I say that Krishna is the only way, 
in this oh. form, mm -hmm. in this bhakti, you have to have devotion to Krishna like this, then I've limited him by doing that. So yeah, there's many paths. And we don't know what's best for people. People yeah. have other karma. It's like maybe their whole karmic destiny is to worship another deity for this mm -hmm. lifetime and then go experience that realm mm -hmm. and then purify some stuff and then they can come back and then eventually. But because I, I really don't like forcing anybody to do anything, right? Because if we do that, then we've all of, all of a sudden become part of the problem in this world and we've created conflict mm -hmm. and opposition and my way is the only way which has never ever 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 turned out good we're still <laughs> dealing with the consequences of that and it's still happening in this mm -hmm. world and it's something that we desperately need to let go of mm -hmm. and i think with the true higher understanding of krishna's teachings I think we finally can let go of that and then just yeah. be at peace and seek the peace and stillness and Krishna for us. And that's what's going to raise the world, not right. by forcing others to worship Krishna when we haven't even attained Krishna yet. Right? And once we, you attain Krishna, you don't walk around anymore trying because you just radiate it and people will flock to you, but yeah. you're not doing anything anymore. And then you see it <laughs> as a divine place. Yeah. So everything is okay. Mm. Whether people are seeking Krishna or not, it's not our concern, mm. right? Those who are, mm. yeah, do it with all of your heart mm. and all of your mind and all of your soul and surrender onto Krishna and do mm. everything that he says in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, he's saying that in the Gita. He's not saying go out and convert other people. Go out and, you know, until, you know, until that happens naturally through your, you know, higher state of devotion, it'll be natural. Himanshu again. Hmm. The dualists are right, at least at this point. They say the form is greater than the formless because all Hindu scriptures mm -hmm. say so. Katha Upanishad. The formless Brahman is higher than Mahat, Atman. The Supreme Person is higher than the formless. There is nothing higher than the Supreme Person. He is the end and he is the supreme goal. Oh. And then Sri Krishna confirms it in the Gita. I am the basis of the formless Brahman. It is beginningless Brahman to which I am superior. It is said to be neither being nor non-being. And then the Padma Purana, the light that emanates from the toenails of the feet of the Lord of Vrindavan, Sri Krishna, Vrindavan, is the transcendental Brahman that the Janis and even the celestial gods meditate upon. Okay fantastic so i am a krishna devotee and i get this and i do agree but my problem is when the dualists that people who know this and agree with this when they say that we're superior as dualists and krishna's form is superior to the formless then you're not allowing you know, the formless aspect of Krishna to also be prominent and is supremely powerful and a goal to be attained by many because not everybody have the fortune to become Krishna devotees and to worship Krishna in his form, right? So, so you're actually limiting Krishna by holding a rigid view that the form is superior, even though it is. We got to be skillful in our means because we want people to embrace the teachings. And if they and if they read the Bhagavad Gita, and to, me, to them it resonates more as, oh, the formless Krishna, the Brahman, the infinite field of consciousness, the non-dual nature is what they're seeking, then that's great. That is way better than nothing. Wait a second. So um, he's saying, and others are saying, that uh, the form of Krishna is the highest there is? Yeah. Yeah, but wait a second. Oh, so, what is Jesus teaching then, or what are they saying Jesus is teaching? Because Jesus you know, is saying, so who's God the Father then? Like, or what? What are the Buddhists like? What about other traditions other than Hinduism or the Krishna movement? Like, do they have the chance to realize God too, because they don't visualize him in the form, or what? Well, of course they do, because. Krishna is the goal, and he says anybody, by, if they seek him by whatever name, or even by whatever form, right? So, you know, if somebody is totally surrendered onto Jesus, and we know that Jesus, you know, the source of Jesus is Krishna, then that's a viable path. Like, the problem is, is that when we adopt a, a belief, and then we take this as, 
you know, this is the ultimate truth for us. And then we say that it has to be that way for everybody else, then we're just creating conflict. And then we're not advancing as much as we could if we would just surrender and let everything go and allow people to seek the divine by whatever path they want. I still don't understand. So are they saying a particular form or just Krishna has a form, the form. that everybody seeks in the end? That everybody, that every seeker, like, uh, are, are they then becoming one with the form of Krishna when they attain Krishna consciousness? Huh? No, then they go, so the pure devotees of Krishna will go to his realm that's beyond the physical universes. Oh. Right? Oh, so okay. Krishna Lok. And yeah. then there, you know, there's multiple dimensions of his realms where he will be there and you will be with him. Right? So I see it as... I have a very different understanding of the yeah. path, I think. So I see it as different, <laughs> there's different levels of enlightenment. And some, mm -hmm. pe some beings are destined, perhaps, you know, to merge and completely transcend their ego to the point where they don't exist anymore as a separate entity they're just in the brahmic bliss in a state beyond ego but i actually see that the devotees who you know worship krishna and they seek to go to his realm i see them as not transcending the ego and actually remaining in ego identity as here this is me i'm roger and i'm a krishna devotee so krishna is mm -hmm. going to take me to his realm but allow me to remain as this right you know as the being that I think that I am, right? So not transcending the ego, so remaining separate, but still, you know, in his realm with him, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's how, how it's So that's like a lot of people think when they when yeah. they visualize heaven and then going to heaven, they mm. think that they're going to go to heaven and they're going to be there with mm. Jesus or... Oh, this yeah. is all so complicated. It almost feels like it's frying my brain because <laughs> it's so not important. But like to me, but maybe, you know, discussing these things brings ins insights to people. So yeah. it's, it's a good thing, even though for me, I, I feel like I get dizzy. <laughs> It's like, well, it's too much. <laughs> yeah, and the supreme person is higher than the formless. You got to keep in mind that personhood comes from mind, right? It's the mind that really designates a person it's not a body right because you can have a body but say you know say if there was no ability for language or names or labels of any kind could you call that body a person right you know if there was no mental aspect so when i see the supreme personality of godhead i see it as a being mind and of course the supreme personality of god godhead is infinitely powerful and could choose a form but i still see that the form that he chose is still coming from his supreme personality so the mind so mind is still primary and you know for me and then he selected that okay you know for the infinite number of multiverses this is the form that i choose to be right and then from his mind he chose a form right that's how I see it. And then that now that he said that this is my form, yeah, that form is, yeah, it's infinitely supreme. But he chose that form. It wasn't like, like, cause because if it didn't happen that way, then it's like, well, where did his form come from? Of course, that his form also has to come from him, but his form didn't come before him because him is mind. So Krishna's mind is supreme personality. And then the form comes. I just switched my brain off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so over it. Let's move on. Deep truth. Hmm. The earnest seeker will find no matter what path he takes, as long he is earnest, humble, and sincere. Mm. This is my favorite comment <laughs> of the day. C -c 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 comment of the day. We should do that, like the pay like the real. Oh, yeah, but they have like uh, they don't do it live, like they have video playing. To I that. know. That's so creepy. Yeah, that's funny. I thought. Oh yeah, I know. I just wanted to touch, do it for you, buddy. You can edit it out. I'm so gonna leave it in. <laughs> no, you're not. Excellent. Thank you so so much for you comments and adding more to the discussion helping us and others understand uh things more deeply 
yeah, that was great. Um, loved it. So, uh, yeah, next week we're starting with another new version. Maybe oh, you guys yeah. have heard of it. It's called Bhagavad Gita. As it is. Yes. So, really looking forward to that because that is still my favorite version. So, um, yeah, hope you join us for that. Mm -hmm. And we get right back into the wisdom and the teachings. And, of course, join us in the comments section because it is a truly... An epic journey so yeah. remember to hit that like button yes. um, and yeah join us for the other ones let us know in the comments to this video if we <sighs> got it right um, and if we didn't let us know uh, <laughs> we love it and the most important thing is to raise yourself and raise the world thank you so much everyone and a very special thank you to all our members we love you peace